Well, good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today is Sunday, October 11th, 2020. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming on behalf of the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. Again, I say good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I am so glad you came and you clicked on to join me in another awesome lesson. Well, uh, as I always say, another great lesson today. Love your enemies is the topic that I chose. But the Sunday school lesson that we have is actually called Overcoming Self-Interest. Overcoming Self-Interest. And it's from Luke, the 6th chapter, the 27th through the 36th verse. Now, these are going to be some scriptures that you are certainly familiar with talking about loving your enemies. So let's open up first with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, first to say thank you, Lord God. We say thank you for your many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that as we come to study your lesson, Lord God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will give me the words, anoint me, Store upon me the words that is needed to reach someone that have clicked on this morning. Help us to God to have the kind, kind of love that we need. The kind of love that our lesson is beginning to tell us about. About the love that we need to even love our enemies. How tough is that? But Lord God, we know that in you we can overcome anything. And that is even loving our enemies when we do it through the love of Christ. So Father, I pray right now, Lord, that as I come, once again, Lord God, anoint me, decrease Linda, Lord God, and allow your spirit to dwell in me. In the name of Jesus, Father, these and other blessings we pray. Amen. Amen. So again, I say thank you for joining me. And our lesson topic, as I said, is overcoming self-interest. Now, our scriptures are coming from Luke, the sixth chapter, the 27th through the 36th verse. Now, as I always say, you should make sure you have your Sunday school books. Or if you don't have your Sunday school book, you definitely, I mean, you definitely can, um, just use your phone and just um, Google Luke 6 chapter and scroll down to the 27th verse and you'll be, read, be able to follow right along with us. Amen? So, man, here we go. I love this lesson. Now, <laughs> it's going to kind of be an easy one. I, 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 you know, have you ever heard the expression that everybody is going to love you? Not everyone is going to love you. Not everybody is going to like you. You know, that is one of the hardest things for most of us to accept. Because we feel like, well, I'm a nice person. I do good to people. I help people. So why wouldn't you like me, right? Well, sometimes even when you're good to everyone, there's always someone. There's always going to be that one that particularly won't like you. And usually the reason is jealousy, really. But but if we even know the real reason why, it, it still doesn't matter. It still hurts you when you know that someone else dislikes you. And so for me, the only way to love my enemies is to depend on God to bestow his love upon me. That's the only way I can do it. And the person that dislikes me or whatever the case may be, it really doesn't matter. What, what really matters as a Christian is my responsibility and my attitude towards that person. Amen? So, as I said, we're going to be talking about some old, I call them old familiar scriptures. Luke 6, chapter 27 through 36, where Jesus is um, telling us about Loving our enemies. And, you know, it's one thing to love a friend. But it's quite different when they talk about loving your enemy, isn't it? But in our lesson today, we're going to talk about how Jesus taught and commanded us to do just that. I 
actually, in fact, Jesus laid out the house rules, you can call it, for dealing with difficult people. Because we need these house rules because typically when it comes to dealing with a difficult person, we need to have a Christ-like attitude. No matter what. However it happens, we should always remember to think as Jesus would think. Years ago, you know, they had that thing that says, uh, what would Jesus do? And a lot of times when I run into situations, I really go back to that. And I just close my eyes and I say, what would Jesus do? Because sometimes we do overcome. We get overcome with situations and, 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 and it, it is hard. You know, when you think about, wow, I really got to love my enemy. And loving your enemy, it is really difficult. It's not an easy thing to do at all. But again, as I said, when you love with the love of Christ, you can overcome and you can do anything. That's just what I believe. So I want to talk about, before we get started with that, with the scriptures, I want to talk about a little bit so that we can kind of catch on to this about what is love and the definition of love. Uh, when I Google love, it says that love is an intense feeling or a deep affection or love is a liking of something. Well, when we go to the Bible and look up what does the Bible say about love, um, there's a couple different um, types, you could say, of love that the Bible talks about. And, you know, there's romantic love when you're loving your spouse. Then there's a brotherly love that I have for my sisters and brothers, my biological or either my sisters and brothers in Christ. Um, and then that's what we call the everlasting love, the greatest love of mankind that God has given, and that's agape love. And you know, Jesus truly expects us as Christians to love the unlovable. He expects for us to love our enemies. And it's easier said than done. We hear that so often. It's easier said than done. And I tell you, this statement about loving your enemies... That is definitely easy said than done. So let's read the scriptures. Um, so I am going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. And we're coming from Luke 6, chapter the 27th through the 31st verse. And it reads, But I say unto you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on your cheek, offer the other. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even giving them your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do, then do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do unto you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive much gain. But love your enemies. 
Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Amen? Wow. I tell you, I, I, I wanted to stay on that topic about love, because for myself, I always felt that love is one of those... Um, is one of those action words that we a lot of times that and, and this is Linda talking. I I really feel that um just for my surrounding of people and the places I go and the people that I be around, um people really take the word love for granted. I, I, I think we use it very lightly. You hear a lot of people say, Love you, you get off the phone, love you. You know, you and a group of people, oh, I love you. And, um, but do they really know the meaning of love? Do you really understand what you're saying? You know, love is also an action word. We should never forget that. So let's go ahead and get into the lesson. Um, we talked about, um, We talk about the scripture um, here that I just read where Jesus was telling us what we should do. Um, he was telling us to love our enemies. And, and Jesus was acknowledging that, you know, when he told us to love our enemies, he was actually acknowledging, you guys, that we would actually have enemies. And, and I think that we miss that. Jesus is basically saying he knew it was going to be hard. He knew that people was going to dislike us. And it wasn't a surprise for him at all. Despite everything that has been, that was happening to him. He knew that. So again, loving your enemies and yeah, it's a simple sentence, but it's definitely is a difficult concept to live your life with. You know, I um be around kids a lot and and you know, have you ever watched like a one or two year old they're playing and one of them may have a toy and then the other one comes and take it away from them, right? And then the first, the first baby immediately snatches it back. Or if one toddler <laughs> knocks one down, the other one comes, he gets up and he go back and push him back again. So I always say that I, I just think that in our DNA, we just automatically, we just become defensive. That's in our DNA. Because babies, they don't even know. But if someone takes something from them, they turn around and take it right back. So I just think it's in our DNA. It's that thing, what they call an eye for an eye. So a lot of times I see babies, they say, you, you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. So, but Jesus flips that idea on us, if you think about it. Instead of us responding to others according to what they've done to us, we're supposed to treat them the way that we want to be treated. You know the golden rule when you were in school. The golden rule is do unto others as what? That's right. How you would have them do unto you. So... <sighs> I tell you, this, this thing about loving your enemies, if we can get this, everybody, if we can get this about loving people that dislike me, just what a blessing it can be if we can only just get that part. So, it's important for, for you also to understand that Although Jesus was telling us to love our enemies and do good, to, 
he 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 wasn't telling us to basically be domads or let people walk over us or anything like that. But he wants us to respond in love. You know, respond in love. We talked about the different types of love. When, when someone does something evil to you, you don't have to turn around and do evil back. And that's what Jesus is trying to get us to understand. And, you know, when, when, when you look at someone through Jesus' eyes, hmm, it, it becomes so much easier for you to really have a kind word for that person. Because Jesus himself chose to love. And so in return, as Christians, we should try to do the same thing. Amen? Because think about it. I know sometimes um, as a manager at my office, sometimes... Um, People may say or do something that kind of shock me that they would say or do that to any person, not just their manager, just to anybody. But sometimes you have to rec you 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 really have to put yourself in someone else's shoes, and and you may not know what that person has went through. Sometimes I see people coming in in the mornings, and if I know that that person would normally say good morning then I know that, you know what, she had a tough morning. So I would make sure to go by her QB and say something nice to her because she has had a terrible morning. And any act of kindness, you're showing love. And it's very important for us as Christians to always remember that. Because when it's, when it's difficult to truly love your enemies, that's when we truly have to lean and depend on God. Because he knew, remember, he said it was, it was not going to be easy, right? So, I tell you, time gets by on me every week. I keep saying I was going to get right on the, on the nose. But I just want to say about two or three things. And number one, um... The whole lesson is just talking about how Jesus instructed all his listeners to love their enemies and, and to be nice to the people that they even hate. And we know that this goes against all the nature. But you know what? It's showing the love of Christ. And while it's easy, it may not be, I mean, it not that it's easy, but even though it might be difficult, but it will become easier as you put Christ first. So, as Christians, we really need to work on that. And that's why I wanted to spend some time on this. We really need to work on that love thing. Because once we get love, I believe that everything else will fall in line. Really, it really will. Once we learn how to love the way that Christ wants us to love, having the love of Christ in our hearts, I really and truly believe that all the other stuff would just fall in line. God will allow your heart to become so humble. Truly, that's what I believe. And then you also have to remember that as Christians, we must do what Christ has asked us to do. And that is love our enemies. Well, once again, I want to say thank you for taking the time and clicked on and come in and join me this morning. I hope something was said that touched your heart this morning that you'll be able to go and talk to someone else. I pray that God would be with you and that this week that you would focus on the love of Christ. That no matter what the situation, no matter what someone says, no matter what someone do, you would think about Christ and say, what would Jesus do? And really focus on loving your enemies. God bless you.